Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back overtime. RLCS overtime here. We just got done talking to Dapper. It was a lot of fun, but now we've got Europe. I'm Wave Punk. Got a findable carpet. This beard spawns carrots, I've seen now. Mm. That's I mean, fun. It, it, I don't use it for storage often as long as it's clean, but it can actually store things. Good to hear. We got a Shogun. We got a Gibbs over in this direction. You pointed the wrong way, but no one will they catch that, but I'll call it out. But yeah, Carpet's beard, like, I think he just forgets when things are around him. and it just You know, kind of goes you know fun, funny things happen when you have Easter miracles. Easter miracles aside, European Rocket League was pretty crazy here this week, and we got it all started off with Flipside versus Penta. Is Flipside going to take the win? This was surprising, though. It took uh, Flipside all five games to get the win. After game three, I think a lot of people were just calling Penta's going to win this because they looked really dominant, and it looked like we might have that World Championship curse once again. Yeah, Penta to me have been a team that have really struggled to grow themselves into the RLCS. There's been a lot of teams that kind of like play really well during community but can't quite get used to the big stage. This is as close to the community Penta as we have ever seen. It was good to see Penta coming out here. As they were able to take it into the full extent of five games. The flip side ultimately taking the win. It's exciting that that final game, eight goals, that's about the most aggressive game we've seen in Europe in a long time. And in general, Flipside Tactics is a team that we were, I mean, me personally, I was a little scared about. They, we didn't want to see the curse that happened from season one to season two, but we didn't even see them qualify in the land, let alone, you know, the playoffs. Uh, they weren't coming into this week with the best record, but they did really well this series, and I'm not going to spoiler alert you guys for the next series. Oh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you see how it That's our whole job. job is to spoiler alert things. Flipside versus Gale Force. One of the things about Flipside is that they started off the season with their with their one game week and with their bye week, so we had not really seen them play up until this week. They get the win in Penta. It looks scary, but then up against Gale Force, it only took them four games to take the first win off of Gale Force. And that was perfect for Flipside. They got the warm-up series versus Penta. Like We saw how strong they were in games four and five and they kept that going versus Gale Force, which was a huge series for top two. Yeah, and I completely agree with you as well. If they play against Gale Force first game of their day, I believe that they lose this, but they got to game four, and finally the positioning and the speed started to work out for Flipside. Gale Force could not hold on. Now, the thing is, Flipside, we've, we've seen some, some play from them, and we've been like, I don't know, this doesn't look like the world championship caliber team that we've been seeing. I know I picked Gale Force to win this game here, and Flip side though, they come out and they are the only team so far that has been able to take a win off of Gale Force. And Pashi always tries to build teams to beat Flipside, mm. and uh, it didn't work here again, but there's still time, obviously, in playoffs and so forth. But yeah, Flipside, like, th this is the first time we saw them like, all right, these guys can make a run at it because Europe is so competitive right now, they weren't looking strong. And the big thing here is this is Gale Force's big real test of mm -hmm. the RLCS. And I've heard rumblings there are players on that team that are kind of like struggling with the nerves of these big, big games. They're sure. breaking rotations. So Gale Force, they've got more big games coming up next week. They might selfless it. They need to hold on. They need to keep communicating to each other and keep each other calm. Well, we talked about we talked about this on the desk during or during RLCS that like this is the biggest opportunity Shaw Set has had up until this point. He had a team that was, did very poorly in season one, season two, it was a little bit better. This time they were undefeated up until last week. And now they've finally dropped a game to Flipside, but they do bounce back in their next series here against Resonant. They take it to four games, win it with three. And Resonant, they've been having a tough season. They came in as like my third best team in Europe after qualifiers through all the community tournaments during the off season. And they've just laid an egg for this entire season so far. <laughs> they just, they really just don't <laughs> seem terribly coherent. And honestly, for me, like my player of the season so far on the Europeans, I'd have to be Violent Panda. Mm. I mean, he did fantastic last season and he's only gotten better coming into this season. And him and Pashi have really been working together. And I think that's another big part of it is Resident keeps catching teams when they're on weeks and keeps catching teams when they're performing well. And Resident just being a little bit shy of that is really struggling to just keep up with the competition. And then of course, uh, Shaw set. he did come up big here. He got five goals during uh, this series. So that's a good sign for Gale Force. If he can get on the offensive side, his defense is normally good. Had a lot of mistakes this week though. So if he can get some uh, confidence going on the offensive side, he's got a good chance to bring this team to a top two spot. 
Now going up against Northern Gaming, Resident continued on. They've only gotten one win so far in league play and they do not improve that here. The shot from Maestro, kind of the, the most beautiful of angles to bounce it off of his car to get things started here as Northern Gaming was off to a 3-1 victory. And as you said, they keep catching teams on their on weeks. Mm. This was the best Northern Gaming I have seen in months. The positioning, sublime. The speed, incredible always pressing their teams into their final third. They've not looked this good in months. And I mean, just imagine having to go up against that right after you face Gale Force, mm. who up until this, the series right before that had were the only undefeated team in Europe. Then they lose to Flipside, which probably isn't something you really beat yourself up about because it's Flipside. Then you got to deal with Northern Gaming, who's on their prime. And one yeah. of the hardest things is like Devo kind of had a quiet series, but it doesn't matter with Northern. Only two of them have to show up per series. It seems like they always trade off a series here or there, and it's been really working out for them. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, you, you brought up the Northern Gaming was looking great. That game three there, whether they dropped to Resonant, the only game they dropped this entire weekend as they go up against Kaunos next and get the clean 3-0 sweep to end the day. And of course, once Northern Gaming won game four, Kaunos knew that their playoff hopes were done. Uh, so that could have had a factor here. Northern Gaming came out swinging, and Kalnos did put up a fight in games two and three, at least, uh, for their final game. Did you of say Kalnos did poop a fight? They're, that's their nose we're talking about. Kalnos pooped a fight? I don't even know what I said anymore. Oh, I think that's what you said. You said pull up, put up a fight. Put up a fight. Anyway. How am I supposed to make a joke when you don't even remember what you said? <laughs> <sighs> Rob. Gibbs only cares if it's his own dad joke. And do you. <laughs> A Devo game three overtime winner, probably the best goal we've seen this week. And that's what Devo uh, does. He comes out slow once in a while, but this series he showed up. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you are an upcoming team and you want to learn rotation, go and get a hold of these replay folders from Northern Gaming. It was a clinic in controlling that middle boost, rotating back and not making a mistake, knowing when to give up the offense. Yeah, so that does it for the recap here of all of the European play. We have four teams right now tied for first place at four wins and one loss. It's it's anybody's game right now as far as top two. We have Cal Nose who's, who's basically eliminated at this point, but as far as top two goes, we, don't, we have no idea who's going to be able to get the bye. And at the start of the season, we're all like, all right, Flipside and Northern are usually the two big guns in Europe. They started off slow, but this week they both proved that when it matters, they show up big. And once again, we're seeing like it could be Flipside and Northern, top two in Europe once again. Now, right now in both regions, there are a, there's a team in each region that's already out, mm -hmm. which kind of relieves a little bit of pressure from the remaining seven teams because now there's only one spot left for elimination. Mm -hmm. So the seventh place spot is now the only spot teams at the bottom end are really trying to not get in. So if you kind of are one of those teams that's just, eh, we haven't done so well, we really don't think we'll get top two, you know, a team like Selfless, although they, I think they've already clinched their top mm -hmm. six. But mm -hmm. even here in Europe, everything's so much closer. Everything is, I mean, a four-way tie. It's asinine. Mm -hmm. So just to see this come out, I think is it really shows the tight competition. Yeah, we'll see that in a bit more detail when we get into the standings in a little bit. But we're going to talk about the top five plays for Europe. High flying action. Got people like Greasy and Pashi all over this. But we're going to start off again with a defensive play. This one from Magnus. Yeah, Magnus coming out with the double save. I think Wave called this one. He was really impressed by it. Mm. The first save, he's in the back of the net. He has to get down so quick and makes the second save as well here. Now, this is extremely hard to do. He, he jumps off, off the, the wall. wall. Yeah, that's extremely hard to do. And what a play from him. And Greasy finally showing up for Flipside with some redirect plays. Yeah, I mean, this is what we like to call the negative angle aerial. That was as perfect as he could possibly get it. Caught it with just the lip on the top of his bumper. Doesn't add that much extra power onto it. Just wants to push this one up into the top of the net. But then continuing on, Gale Force... Our undefeated team up until this week when they met up with Flipside Tactics. Pashi90 getting the plays here to carry this through the air. We, we talk about how air dribbles are generally not effective. The thing he does here is staggering the boost, just, just making almost the aerial fake here to make it go in. Yeah, Pashi does this a lot. When he's in the air, he loves to fake it because everyone thinks that you're just going to keep climbing with the ball. So he fakes it and then uses his boost to power it through the net. And for the defender in that situation, you've got to look at him and just go, he could still be hitting the ball. The ball is covering Pashi in that scenario, so he can fake that all he wants. But Northern Gaming in prime play, Remco with the setup and then the bump. I mean, just to have the awareness to realize, like, ah, I'm not going to be able to take this shot, so I'm just going to 
go for pretty much a, a ball that can go wherever it wants. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you, he tried that twice today. He yeah. did. The other time he barely clipped the defender and he still made the save. This time he gets full contact. What a play. Knowing that he's done that twice gives me so much hope. Is this a tactic that he wants to start imploring into his standard play? If so, please let me see more. Yeah, no, but the other, and just later on that game, final play of the game, clutch way to win it here in overtime. Devo dropping it straight down to get the clean sweep over Countos. The boost control, like this is season two Devo. Like this is what we've been missing here or there, but when he has time to do a backboard double tap, he will score those. He actually boosts backwards, so he gets a better angle on that, throws it right down in overtime. Clutch play from him to end the day, and they win both games. Yeah, I do love seeing. I love seeing plays. We, we saw this in the, in the beginning of Land of Amsterdam as well. Like these, these the defender, the, the, the offender, the number one role who is setting up the ball for the striker is doing whatever he needs to to take care of the final defender, just to open it up and to get the bumps in the air. It's crazy stuff there from Remco. And that's part of what has them in the running for the top seed right now. There's a four-way tie. Let's take a look at the standings. So many teams going for those top two spots. Yeah, Four-way tie for first. So obviously all those teams are battling for a top two spot. Mocket though has clinched. They are safe. And then it comes down to Penta and Resonant for the final spot. Mm. It's going to be so close to see those two teams play. I mean, just the pressure of knowing that you are one of the only two teams that can get knocked out. And right now, Resonant, we know they've been struggling. You know, right now they are just a bit under Penta, but they do still have some games next week. And they do sadly have to watch to see how some results happen, which probably has to be the most stressful part of all of it. Mm -hmm. To just be like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not in control of this. I have to now watch. And like, I can't yeah. imagine as a player, like, now really rooting for a team. Like, oh, yeah. please yeah. win. Because if you yeah. don't, then I'm out. Yeah, and, and, and right now, Resonance has the head to head tiebreaker over Penta. And those are the two teams we're sitting like, we talked about. They're, they're sitting there right, gonna, gonna be, it's all up to the games that happen in this final week and just how, how the record pans out. So we can take a look at the schedule for week five. These will be your final games of league play for Europe. And look at games three through five. Four and one, four and one, four and one, four and one, four and mm. one, four and one. That's where top two will probably be decided. Those three matches are gonna be great. And it, it comes down to this to see like, if you make a world championship spot and you don't have to worry as much during playoffs. Yeah, but I like this though. We're not going into the final week for the top two in Europe just going, oh, if this happens and this, we can just look at this and just go, if you win two games, you go to land. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice, simple sort of situations for, for some of these games. But for many of the other games, especially in North America, there's a lot of complicated things. And if you're wondering, I want to know all the playoff implications. How is all this going to pan out? We've got some information for you. It's coming up. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be going into all of the playoff breakdowns. Going to be just talking about every situation, how it's going to work out. It'll be a lot of information, but it'll be really cool. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.